This video covers the calibration of the North Carolina State University supersonic wind tunnel as a part of MAE 352 Aerodynamics 2 lab by Colin Bolton, Alan Lee, and Timothy Calabres. Having a calibrated wind tunnel ensures us that we can get the most accurate free stream Mach number possible based on the block setting used in the wind tunnel. Block settings were adjusted using the dial in figure 1 in the bottom right corner and went from 2200 to 800 in increments of 200. Uh, the higher the block setting number corresponds to a higher cross-sectional area upstream which would should correspond to a lower Mach number. In these experiments we used two different techniques uh, one being the pitot tube calibration which measured pressures differentials and the Schleiren imaging system which uh, took pictures of the shock wave um, off of the wedge and measured angles. So the theory behind the pitot tube is that the pitot tube will create a bow shock ahead of the pressure ports on it. Uh, what this does is it creates two separate sets of parameters both upstream and downstream of the shock wave. And this means that the total pressures and static pressures observed by the pitot tube are not the true pressures within the sub supersonic wind tunnel. So using isentropic relations uh, between states A and B we can take known values for the pitot pressure at B and the stagnation pressure at A and calculate the Mach number which will be used uh, for our calibration curves. Using these relations equation 1 can be derived which allows us to calculate the free stream Mach number or MA. So the theory behind the Schleiron system is that across a shock wave you have large fluctuations in properties. Uh, we specifically will be focusing on density. And the Schleiron system consists of a strong coherent light source, a uh, slit, a set of mirrors, and a recording device. And the way this works is that the light passes from the source uh, through the slit which reflects off of a mirror and passes through the test section uh, which is then reflected off of a second mirror to a focal point um, which in our case is the projection screen in the supersonic wind tunnel. And As the test uh, runs we will be taking photographs of the image of the oblique shock wave formed uh, from the supersonic flow. Shown in figures 4 through 6 is the North Carolina State University Schleiren system. An aureal arc lamp provides the light source for the system. The light bent by the shock wave in the test section is separated from the background light into contrasting light and dark shades. The light and dark areas represent the change in density across the shock. Using the image projected by the Schleiren system, it is possible to calculate the Mach number of the flow. The angle formed by the oblique shock is a function of the angle of the wedge and the Mach number upstream of the shock. The relationship between the angle of the shock, the Mach number, and the wedge angle is given by equation 2. This relationship is used to plot a theta beta Mach curve. From this curve, the Mach number can be determined for a given wedge. An example of the image projected by the Schleiren system is shown in figure 8. The oblique shock can be seen clearly out in front of the wedge. Using this image and a graphic editing program, the angle of the shock can be measured. The results from Mach number calculations based on the differential pressures measured across the shock at different block settings are plotted in figure 9. An exponential line of best fit is graphed on this plot. It has an R squared value of approximately 0.86. The Mach numbers calculated at block settings greater than 1200 fall relatively close to the trend line. However, below a block setting of 1200 and at Mach numbers greater than 2.4, the data becomes less accurate. The Mach numbers at different block settings, based on the differential pressure, is plotted again in figure 10. Here, a quadratic line of best fit is used. Once again, the R-squared value is approximately 0.86 and gives a nearly identical representation of the data in the previous plot. The Mach numbers determined from the Schleiren system are plotted in the same manner as the previous figures. Shown in figure 11 is the Schleiren calibration data with an exponential line of best fit. This model has an R-squared value of 0.89. A noticeable difference in this plot compared to the pressure calibration is the constant increase of the Mach number with respect to the block setting. Looking back on figures 8 and 9, there is an unexpected decrease in Mach number occurring at a block setting of 800. Following the same method as before, the Schleiren calibration is also modeled 
with a quadratic line best fit. The R squared value for this model is 0.97. This is significantly greater than all the previous data trend lines. So when we analyze and interpret the data, we can conclude that the Schleiren imaging system is the most accurate method for calibration in the wind tunnel. Uh, when using the quadratic fit uh, shown in figure 12, we saw that the goodness of fit was roughly 97%, which is considerably higher than any other method that was used. Uh, in addition to this, and besides data analysis, uh, we can see that there's a lot more error introduced into the uh, pressure method. Be this ranges from electrical equipment, such as the pressure transducers that were used uh, to calculate pressure at free stream and in the pitot tube. Uh, also the uh, the range of pressures that were observed in the tunnel. Rather than having the pressures uh, be raised to a value and stay at a constant value over a period of time, uh, we saw pressures increase, um, co a constant increase to a certain peak value at a certain time and then drop off after that. Um, this collection of errors is much less than uh, what we could expect to find in the Schleiren system where we were simply measuring the angles of the oblique shock wave and the wedge and plugging them into equation 2 to find the uh, free stream Mach number.